Hey folks, how are you doing? Today we'll talk about 7 most common mistakes that beginner investors do when they start investing. In the previous video, how to invest, you can check it out here, I talked about things, what you should do when you start investing. And today, what is not less important, we'll talk about things which you should not do. Basic errors and mistakes that most beginner investors do. Because mistakes, if you learn from them, they give you a lot of benefits. And if you just make them without learning any lesson from the mistakes, then you're just paying for something without receiving anything in return. The first mistake, which I see everywhere, is not investing at all. Look at the S&P 500 historical price graph and realize that in the long term it's always growing up. If you invest it for a short period of term, yes, you can be having upsides and downsides, but if you wait a bit longer, then eventually your investment portfolio will grow up. And investing is a great tool, as I told in the previous video as well, to save your money, means protect it from inflation, and the second thing is to grow your money even more. Mistake number two is not having emergency funds or as I call it safety pillow before you start investing. Safety pillow is amount of money that you keep readily accessible for you in case of emergency, in case you lose your job and you don't have income, in case your car breaks down, in case you got ill and in case of something worse like things happening now in Ukraine and Totally, some people suffering so hard, but economy is destructed so much that people keep losing their jobs. And I'm just lucky one here that the war did not come to here. But keeping emergency fund is a must for everyone. No matter you're investing or not, it should be always with you. And to have that, you need to keep a personal budgeting under control. Because to calculate how much money you need for three to six months, without any income, you need to know what your expenses are. And to know what your expenses are, you have to keep tracking them and know at least average amount that you spend per one month. And then you can multiply it by three or six and the more the better. That's the general idea. And this emergency fund should be readily accessible for you. It means you want to keep it in the local currency, some part in the cash and some part you can keep on the deposit, like bank deposit or something like that, short term, so that you can extract it at the any moment. Or you can keep it in the American T-bills, if you're American, which has obligations without coupon, but all the short term and you can a little bit benefit from keeping it there and not just losing their money on inflation. But the general trend is that you want to keep it super readily accessible in case of emergency. And investment portfolio is not your emergency fund. Because as soon as you start investing and put your money to the stock market, stock market has some volatility, means it is moving up and down. Extracting that money at that moment will lead you to losing your money in the stock market. That is why investment portfolio is not considered your emergency fund. The next thing is quite obvious, but still important to mention it. Next common mistake that people usually do is to pay off your dividends before you start investing. Because if you did not pay your credits, it's generally like investing, which works against you. It's a compound interest that is making you losing your money and not actually gaining. Therefore, it's super vital and important before you want to put your money in the investing thing to stop your money from losing its value as we also talked in the previous video, but important to mention here. It's obvious and super simple, but therefore it's must. The next mistake most, most of the people in this world do is not subscribing to this channel. <laughs> Go ahead and fix it. It's free. All right. And the real mistake number four is when you have already decided that you want to invest and you have funded your account, broker account, but you are not investing because you're waiting for the right moments to invest. So waiting for a dip or something like that. And this is actually a mistake because you don't know where the dip will be, how the market will 
behave and actually no one knows. So by doing that, by not investing, when you have decided to do that, you are not building a habit, a habit of investing every certain periods that you've decided to, for example, every month or every quarter or whatever. But that habit is a must for every investor and waiting for something to happen so that you will enter the market on the dip is uh, one of the most uh, common and crucial mistakes because as I told, no one knows where the markets will go eventually next time, tomorrow. And if the amount of money you are going to invest right now at the first time is too big, for example, you have some savings and now you decided that you want to invest that savings in the stock market and it's too big amount, then it's quite reasonable not to invest it all in a single time, but rather divide it into three or four equal parts and then invest them uh, for three months. For example, this month you invest first part, next month another, and then so on. It's like a ladder and this is the best way to maintain the average price across all this time and not being influenced by the timing on the market at this particular moment. And of course, it's super difficult to start investing when you're doing this first time, when you don't know all the details, you don't have a relative or a friend who is doing this and you have to try it all on your own. And sometimes it may be a bit frustrating and a bit scary to start in the first. But as soon as you dive into this, as soon as you research and then try doing this yourself, then you will realize that it is actually not that hard and you actually made a benefit for your future self. And the next quite common mistake which most of the investors do is not having a financial goal. I have a video about financial goals, go ahead and check it. But basically, this is when you sit down and calculate how much money you need for your safety, for your basic needs in your life, how much money you need for a little bit more luxury living and how much money you need for you to live your life of your dream, the perfect life. And you have to sit down and to calculate the things. And generally, you can only do that when you know your incomes and expenses. And when you can predict the forward returns of your portfolio, including the inflation, because you're calculating this, especially in the long term, and you want to take effect of all of that. And you can do that only when you know your expenses, when you know your needs, and having a goal is super important because you can track your progress, you can learn from mistakes that you're doing, you know which strategies are working and which are not, and you can change your strategy when you see that something is not that good. It may seem super simple, but it represents the essential idea of investing and the feeling of when you need to stop. When you need to stop putting your money for your investment and when you can already live off that investment portfolio, live off that dividends. Having a goal gives you more control over what you are doing and which mistakes you are doing and how you learn from that mistakes. You can mark the milestones which you pass in your investing path. Now, the next common mistakes I see is that, for example, if investor has a goal, but investor doesn't have a strategy. And strategy is how you're gonna get from when, where you are now to that point when you reach your goal. Strategy helps you to pass all this way until your financial goals. And your strategy may be uh, simple dollar cost averaging in most common S&P 500 ETF, which will be absolutely passive from your side. You do not to keep track of the general trends right now. Or you may invest in a single stocks by carefully picking them and you can decide which strategy is good for you. You can create something else. But the general idea is that you have to have the strategy. And what may be the consequences of you not having a strategy? It may be investing more than you can afford yourself. Then you may start withdrawing your money from your investment portfolio. For example, the dividends that you are receiving, 
you may start withdrawing them sooner than you actually can afford doing it to yourself. And then you may not be able to see the long-term effect of your investment. This includes everything what I mentioned before. And here I wanna talk about the mentality, the difference between the mentality of a regular person and mentality of investor. When average person wants to make a purchase, for example, of a car, that person looks at the price and sees, for example, $10,000. And for average person, the price of that car is $10,000. But what's the mentality of the investor? When investor looks at the price, it doesn't mean that the price for that car is $10,000 and it's final. No, that investor will calculate that $10,000 being put to the investment portfolio for 10 years with average rates of return of 10% and additional expenses which he would spend to maintain that car, to top up the fuel, to make the general maintenance, to clean that car, to make the insurance for that car, for example, let it be $100 a month, all right? So that $10,000 with regular top up of $100 per month over 10 years with rate of return of 10% will lead us to $45,000, almost $46,000. And that will be the final price of that car. Not 10,000, but $45,000. And that's the mindset of investor. Investors look in the long term and then they realize what may be the effect of different purchases which they make if they would invest that money in the stock market. And here as well, when we are talking about strategy, I want to mention your personality because personality is one of the most important things when we are talking about investors because investing itself is not that complicated but following the strategy, being patient, feeling the sense of time and the sense of enough is one of the key instruments when you're investing. As I told before, the main enemy of the investor is the investor himself. And then the final thing for today, which I want to mention as a mistake, is not considering taxes when you're investing. And generally for the investor, there are two types of taxes, capital gain tax and dividends tax. There are different taxes in different states in the US, there are different taxes in different countries, and you wanna make sure that you're familiar with the taxes. And in the description, I will leave a free link to the website which can help you find out what are the investing taxes and taxes in general for your particular country. Uh, there are lots of countries listed there so you can go ahead and check what are the taxes for you and the second link i will leave for you in the description is the treaty taxes between the us and your country because if you are receiving dividends by default you have to pay 30 percent of the taxes if you are dealing with some us broker but if your country has a treaty means like a contract with the US, then you can pay less taxes depending on where you are from. And different countries have different taxes. For example, that 30% can be reduced up to 20%, up to 10%, or even sometimes up to 0%. So if you're dealing with a US broker, you can go ahead and check that link as well. It's absolutely free. That's it for today. You can put thumbs up for this video if you enjoyed, and see you in the next video.